Hey, good evening. This is Sir Hassan Dosani. How are you guys doing tonight? If you can see my face, my screen, and my voice, if you can hear my voice, please type yes. Hi, thank you very much. Right, so let's wait for one or two minutes for people who are trying to join in and then we will start. I'm just going through some initial comments and yes, I will tell you the important technical articles tomorrow. In fact, I will cover them. I will spend like 15, 20 minutes on articles. One more minute. Uh, Seema is asking, is there any change in the course? No, Seema, not, no, no, nothing has changed. All right, so let's begin. Welcome to tonight's session on uh, SBL. Today is day four. And uh, today we will be covering two very important topics of SBL. One is risk management. And the other one is internal controls or weaknesses. Uh, these two topics are tested in every paper. If not both, then either one of them is definitely tested. At least 15 marks question uh, comes from either one of these paper topics. And if the both topics are tested, then at least 20, 25 marks. So I thought I will spend a full day today full three hours not full three hours but majority of the portion doing this topic properly uh, in fact we will try and do two questions on risk management because even in the last attempt the previous attempt there was a question on risk management there was a risk register and most students were not able to uh, handle that question it was carrying 15 or some 15 marks i believe it was a high score it could have been a high scoring question uh, but because students got nervous they missed those marks 
right so if you want to remain in touch with me that's my whatsapp group uh, whatsapp number admin uh, will share the link to this group you just click on the link to join okay the way you can ask questions is as usual you will type your questions in the question box please make sure that your questions um, pertains to the slide or pertains to the topic under discussion you can, you need to hold your questions which are not relevant to the current topic and in the last i will allocate like 10 minutes for generalized questions okay so today's exam technique is how to present your answer so many students they ask me sir what should be the, our writing style and uh, should we give bullet points and a report or what so this is a brief summary of how you present or draft your answer and uh, i have been covering most of this during the last three days so i'll just quickly go through it and and these uh, points have been picked up from the examiner's report what exactly he expect the students how he wants the students to present the answer so the first thing is linking answer to exhibit is a must no general answer or definition is required and if you give a general answer or a definition as per examiner you will not be allocated or given any marks for that okay the second thing is adopt a paragraph style of writing and this one is very important one paragraph should contain one point only okay i've been repeatedly uh, requesting you guys that first you need to decide the number of points how do you decide the number of points based on the total marks right you normally divide by two once you've decided the number of points, then I had also told you what should be the size of one point. One point should be four to five, uh, you know, five to six lines maximum. One point should be one paragraph. Do not try to fit, do not try to squeeze in two points in one paragraph. Do not try to give lengthy paragraphs especially in a briefing note or a briefing paper the examiner expects short 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 short, short, short many paragraphs rather than three big fat ugly paragraphs okay so think of it like this one point is one paragraph if you need to give five points then at least five paragraphs okay so one paragraph uh, this is the size and this four to six lines is a criteria mainly for manual students paper for cbe uh, you know you can you normally copy paste information so it could be two lines three lines five lines doesn't matter give many small small paragraphs leave one line between each paragraph this is applicable for both cbe and manual students each after each paragraph or after each point please leave one blank line make it visually easy for the examiner to check your script because you know if you give open uh, one line between each paragraph then the examiner can clearly see at one glance that you have given five paragraphs if you don't leave any line between each paragraph sometimes the last line of the paragraph merges with the first line of this paragraph it doesn't look visually nice okay and avoid uh, using bullet style don't use bullet style because you know when you write to the board of directors uh, avoid using bullet style instead just give small small paragraphs focus a lot on the format whatever format is required in that particular question be it a report be it an email be it a presentation slide whatsoever whatever format is required do not take format lightly because that creates a professional impression in the mind of the examiner 
focus more on format, nice presentation. Some of you are in a habit of just scribbling, taking it lightly. No, it's a professional paper. Think that your script is going to the board of directors. So it deserves that level of neatness and professional formats and presentation, right? This one is very interesting. Look for stress words. So when you are reading the case study, look for stress words. And what do I mean by stress words? It's words like very, extremely, significantly, notably, highly. These are stress words. They put extra emphasis on any point or information. So when we look for stress words, then try to use that sentence or use that information. Make sure you use that sentence in your answer, because if the examiner is using a stress word, he's putting some extra emphasis on a particular line or, or on a particular information, then he expects you to refer to that while you are drafting your answer. So just keep your eyes open for words like significantly. That's the most common stress word. Significant, extreme, notably, very. In yesterday's question, there was a there was a sentence which says there is fierce competition. Fierce is a you know it's adding more weight weightage to the word competition. So stress words. Uh, use of models is not mandatory. I have discussed this in detail in the first two days. And whenever you are asked to give recommendation, then your recommendation should be supported with justification. So first of all, we will never give a conclusion or a recommendation unless specifically asked in the question. And But whenever you do give a recommendation, then you need to also justify why you are recommending option A and not option B, right? Now, this one is examiner's uh, most common uh, issue. Sometimes one requirement asks for two things. So if you read the questions, in one sentence, the examiner is asking for two things, okay? For example, in, this is a real question. It says, assess the role and value of non-executive directors. So there are two things. He wants you to talk about the role of non-executive directors, what they do, and value, like what, what uh, value they add to the board or what are the advantages. These are two different things. The role of non-executive director, if you recall yesterday, what is the role? Their role is to make strategies. Their role is to uh, scrutinize the performance of executive directors, uh, bring external experience to the board, uh, focus on risk management, focus on remuneration and nomination, all those aspects, right? What is the value? What is the advantage of non-executive director? They bring independence. They add to shareholders' confidence. They, uh, um, they can challenge the executive directors. Employees can talk to non-executive, higher involvement in the committees. So the point is, in this one sentence, there are two requirements. So what do you do then? Then you should give a proper heading saying role. And then you must write one, two, three roles. And then you give a heading value. And then you give advantages, okay? Do not try to mix these two in one thing. Similarly, another example is draft a memo which discusses ethical and reputational concerns. Again, they want you to discuss, touch upon ethical concerns and reputational concerns. I would expect to see two broad headings, ethical concerns, two, three points under ethical concerns, reputational concerns, one, two, three points under reputational concerns. 
Okay, look at this one. Briefing, prepare briefing note which assesses the role and benefits of integrated reporting. So what is the role of integrated reporting and then followed by benefits. So whenever you see this kind of a requirement where there are two requirements in one sentence, then when you present the answer, try to give separate headings so that the examiner can see that you have addressed both the things. The most common issue which the examiner has here is, he says that students, do, they forget to talk about the second one. They just talk on the first one and then they move on. Got it? This one is very important. If question asks you to identify weakness and recommend improvement, or identify risk and recommend mitigation factors, then use a tabular format. Do you remember these kind of questions? Uh, generally, I had said that we follow two marks for one point, but whenever there is a question which says identify the weakness and give recommendation for this kind of question, we follow three marks. So whenever you allocate three marks for this kind of a question, try to make, present a table. You can say, here you can say weakness. And in here you will say recommend. So here you write the weakness and here you write its recommendation. Okay, the, the advantage of um, having a tabular format is that uh, sometimes students under exam pressure, they identify the weakness, but they forget to write recommendation. Okay, so when you make a proper table, you will automatically by default, you will never miss writing the recommendation. Right, so this is some points about how to present your answers. Let me go through the list of questions. The points will look bigger in a tabular format. Yes, of course, the number of lines will double in a tabular format if there are, you know, if you make a table, yeah, that's fine. Sir, heading should be in mid or side. So if it's a broad heading, then you make it mid and then subheadings should follow the side. For example, macro environment can be in center and then political, economic, social can be on side. Sir, if we have little time left, can we use bullet points? Okay, then what other choice you have? <laughs> okay, not suggested, but if you have very little time, then you can use bullet points. Header, header for each paragraph. Now, this is a very debatable. So, Fatima is asking, should we give heading for each paragraph? What do you guys suggest? For example, what are the benefits of non-executive director? So we know four benefits. Should we give four paragraphs or should we give header, heading plus paragraph? What do you suggest? Give heading or not give heading? Subheadings, I mean. Yes or no? Okay, give or no give? Oh my God, I'm getting a perfect variety of answers. And like it's mixed answer. Most of you are saying yes, but most of you are also saying no. Okay. You want a short answer? I would prefer you give subheadings. Okay, and the reason is that make the life of the examiner easy. You know, you know your own writing, so especially for manual students, you you know, you sometimes uh, you yourself is not able to read your own handwriting, especially in the last question. Yeah, and you know your own English. Sometimes the grammar you're not able to explain. So giving a small header will immediately tell the examiner what you intend to write in this paragraph. So I always suggest in order to make the life of examiner easy, there is no harm in giving a small heading, 
yes, it will be time consuming. Of course, it's time consuming. But if he, but if the guy, you know, if the examiner is struggling to understand your English or understand your writing, then it will be, you know, for, it will be, save your life actually. Up to you. My suggestion, I'm not saying mandatory, but my suggestion would be a small heading, one word, two words. Let me see any other question before I... What's the difference between bullet and point? Excuse me, what kind of question is that? Bullet is bullet, a paragraph is paragraph. Okay, so I think uh, uh, I've covered all the questions relating to Does a table look professional to a board of directors? Yes, of course. I... <laughs> yes, why not? No problem in this. If it doesn't look professional, I would have never said this in the first place, right? If I'm insisting on a table, uh, rest assured that I know what I'm saying. It's okay, Fazal. Where is your question? Okay. Right, guys, let's move on to risk management. It is an easy topic. Okay. But if you try to complicate it and get confused, then no one can save you. So as I always say, stick to the basics. Try to understand like a five-year-old boy or a girl. Risk, first thing first. What is the meaning of the word risk? Risk means any future event which may cause damage to you. Which, which may cause damage or harm to the organization. So the word risk is always used for bad things. And of, obviously you as a person, as an individual, you face certain risks, right? For example, you step out of your house, uh, maybe a bus can come and hit you, God forbid, but that's a risk, right? Or maybe uh, COVID, COVID is a big risk or threat these days. Maybe there's a tsunami. Maybe there's an earthquake. Uh, maybe you don't pass SBL. That's a risk, right? It's a clear and present. Uh, it's a tangible risk of not being able to pass SBL. So that's the fact of reality of life that ev just like every human being, organizations, they also face a lot of risks. And if you are a careful or a prudent organization, you will try to protect yourself or you will try to mitigate the chances of risk happening. Uh, first of all, you will try to avoid that risk. And if it happens, then you must be prepared. You try to minimize the consequence and impact. You know, you do all those. So all these activities are called risk management activities so that you pre protect yourself or you protect the organization from the impact or the consequence if those risks happens okay now one of the most common questions is identify key risks so two or three times in your paper the examiner has asked you to identify the key risks faced by this company ABC. Or identify the key risks risk of, uh, you know, the factory. Whatever is the scenario, the thing is identify key risks. 
Now, how will you identify what are the key risks? The word here is key risks, okay, which an organization is facing. So I have uh, given you a list of 10, 15 most common key risks which organization faces. Now, the list can be very long. It depends to from industry to industry, company to company. But from an exam point of view, you just memorize this. I don't know how much if you count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Memorize these 12 key risks. And you will be able to handle any kind of question in the exam. Okay. So what is the first risk? It is called... It is called business risk. And sometimes it is also called strategic risk. There's a slight difference between the meaning of business risk and strategic risk. Let's talk one by one. Business risk. Can you guess? Can anybody define to me in simple five-year-old child language? What do you think is the meaning of business risk? Any risk which may now you guys type i want to i want you to develop this head, habit of guessing inherent risk in starting a business please baba i said explain to me in a five year old child company not reaching its strategic objectives okay operational risk come on i'm asking about business risk you're talking about operational risk internal risk <laughs> you guys love making things complicated, don't you? Business risk simply means a risk which will affect our entire business. Something like a going concern, something which can terribly... Some, a business risk is that risk which is so big and so dangerous that it can wipe off my entire business anything which can affect my business or my going concern is a business risk <laughs> please guys come down please relax it's easy simple five-year-old now covid can we classify covid as a huge Business risk, it, it, it converted into a business risk, right? Because due to COVID, many industries, there are many companies, small, big, they went out of business. Many airlines got bankrupted. Many restaurants got closed. Avis Rent-A-Car, which is the world's largest rent-a-car, they, they went into bankruptcy. In Dubai, in UAE, the largest construction company, uh, they went bankrupt. So anything, any kind of thing, any bad thing, which, has, which is so significant that it can affect your entire business and, you, and can lead you to a going concern is a business risk. And very similar to it is strategic risk. Now you guys should be able to get, guess. What is a strategic risk? It is a risk where of your, it is a risk where your strategies may go wrong. <laughs> Just read it the, in the opposite sense. Strategic risk is a risk which, in which the, your strategies may go wrong. So obviously businesses, they make strategies, right? Some of them are key strategies. New pro add new products or enter new countries or go online. These are some critical strategic decisions. And sometimes these strategies might not achieve the intended results and it might backfire. And if it backfires in a large magnitude, it will even immediately lead to business risk. Right, got it. So anything which business risk means 
anything which can cause a going concern threat. Now, financial risk. It simply means that, guess, guess, financial risk. Anything which can uh, cause a big financial issue to the company. All right. For example, high gearing, um, zero cash, no money to pay salaries. Uh, so a weak financial position, which could be a balance sheet, continuous losses, no cash up available. So financial risk. The company is struggling financially. It doesn't have financial resources anymore because of losses, because of whatever. And if you don't address financial risk properly, it will it may convert into a business risk. It will eventually lead to a going concern, right? So every business they face business risks or strategic risks. Every business they face financial risk. That's where the role of CFO comes that he monitors the financial health of the company. Every month I look at the balance sheet, the PL, the cash flows. I make projected cash flows to see that we are safe for next 12 months. Liquidity risk, now it's getting easier. Liquid liquidity risk means you don't have enough uh, assets, current assets to pay off your current liabilities. Credit risk that you, uh, you know you have given a lot of credit to the market and your debtors. Credit risk risk means that your customers do not pay you. So you've given them, you have sold them your products on credit. And now your customers, for whatever reasons, they're not paying you their dues and you are screwed. Obviously, if they, if they don't pay you their, their dues, eventually it will lead to financial risk. It will lead to liquidity risk. If it gets bigger, it will become a full financial risk. And if it gets bigger, it will convert into a business risk. So they're all kind of linked together. Can I check questions before I move on? Bad debts, risk of bad debts, receivable risk. Yes, so credit risk is to do with your customers. Yes. Very nice. Now I think you are on the right track. Foreign exchange risk. Well, this is a risk where the if that if the company is exposed to any foreign currency or it is dealing in any foreign currency and there is an adverse movement in the exchange rates, then it can screw up my balance sheet, my profitability. So that's the exchange, you know, ex adverse fluctuations in the currencies, foreign currencies. Now, it, it may not apply to all the companies, but it will definitely apply to companies who are either exporting stuff to foreign buyers outside their country or they are importing raw materials from outside the country for example they are buying um, raw material from low-cost countries or they have factories in low-cost countries like vietnam or sri lanka or bangladesh okay so wherever you have any kind of customers or suppliers or business operations outside your home country if there's a currency difference you are exposed to fx risk now can i ask a question here foreign exchange risk now what do we do what do we do to uh, protect ourselves from foreign exchange risk Think and comment. Think and write in comments what is the most, what you can do to prevent or mitigate foreign currency risk. Thank you. 
right let me see comments my favorite thing future contracts very good hedging excellent but this is the two words i wanted to hear um future contracts you can use the word in the exam if the examiner normally says identify the key risk and recommend mitigation actions so first you will if you can identify foreign exchange risk then you will also need to suggest how the company can minimize this risk so one option is hedging other option is future uh, contracts forward contracts so you know it is you it's called forward contracts please don't ask me what these means this is beyond the scope of this subject credit risk how do you uh, this one credit risk how can you mitigate your credit risk tighter credit controls you have proper credit control policies you don't give credit to everybody you analyze you you know monitor you flag things liquidity risk uh, better working capital management so how do you minimize financial risk uh, profitability if the company is may try to make sure that the company makes profitability prof profits strong performance etc business risk and strategic risk how can you minimize it uh, a good competent board of directors a regular review of the strategies to make sure that they are on track okay got it what is intellectual risk the uh, this one intellectual risk can anybody guess intellectual risk hmm. innovation r and d patents yes our key employees skilled employees very good very good i am impressed intellectual intellectual means intellect so you know our key uh, employees like our chief scientist or our r and d staff or our technical employees you know our innovation and patents all these are intellectual property so the intellectual risk means that your key staff or your technical staff they go away and you're not find, able to find a replacement and then of course when your key or technical people they go and you're not able to find the equivalent replacement there will be a skill gap and you will suffer right so intellectual risk you can how can you mitigate if it's a product or a idea you can patent it if it's relating to your key employees you make sure that there is proper notice period you make sure that there is proper succession planning that there is always a second line ready for example just in case the guy leaves there's someone he has trained who can immediately step up into that position uh proper market salaries keep them motivated regular trainings you know okay political risk now i'll speed up a bit political risk is that the political situation of the country is not stable the government is changing there is political instability there is instability in government policies which will affect your business how can you mitigate political risk you just can't change the government right but the way you can mitigate political risk is you diversify into uh several countries you spread your eggs in you don't keep all eggs in one country when you diversify you know you can kind of offset or mi minimize the risk of political risk happening in one country legal and compliance risk is the risk that you miss complying with a particular law and then if you don't follow a law obviously you will be fined 
there will be a penalty, there will be a reputational loss. This is more applicable for those industries which are highly regulated, like banks and financial institutions and oil and gas industries. They are more regulated. So the industries which are more regulated, more than usual, they have a risk of legal and uh, compliance risk. Okay, environmental risk. Environmental risk is there's a risk that because of you, you may cause damage to the earth, the environment, like pollution, emission, uh, uh, waste products. This is again more applicable for manufacturing industries or oil and gas industry. Like several years back, BP, British Petroleum, their main pipeline, which was inside the sea, it busted. And the entire sea was polluted with oil and it was so damaging, they were fined so much that they almost, almost they were, you know, bankrupted. Reputational risk, very important. What is reputational risk? Anything which will lead to negative publicity, which can hurt your brand, which can hurt your goodwill. Okay, very, very important. So companies, they should avoid doing anything which can lead to uh, reputational risk. They should be very careful in their products, their marketing. They should not be political. They should not make statements. They should take care of employees. They should be very careful in all aspects of the business in order to minimize any bad publicity. Health and safety risks is a risk which uh, the risk of accident or injury or death to my employees, my customers, my suppliers, the society, anyone who can, you know, whose health and safety is at risk. So be very careful here. And technology risk means that, you know, in today's world, businesses are dependent on technology. Something as simple as internet. So if I shut down your internet for next three days, you will go crazy, right? You will not be able to attend this webinar. So you know what? I'll share this example with you. So I'm also using internet, right? I'm connected through internet. Very simple, common thing. Supposing my internet stops working, what will happen? If this webinar will just vanish, right? So ACC, they want to be to have two internet connections. One is the normal connection and they also want me to keep a separate internet dongle so that in case that doesn't work, then I will switch to the another line. Similarly, students who are giving CBE paper, you are dependent on internet. You're depending on the PC working. So technology risk is that whatever technology you are using in the business, they should run properly. Otherwise, if there's a problem in that, it can affect your business immediately. Yeah. Do I have any questions on the types of risk? Okay, no real questions. So in the exam, coming back to the exam, there is two or three times the examiner has asked this question. Identify the key risks being faced by this company. So how will you identify? So I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, that you will need to remember the list of most common risks. Okay, and you can mentally run a checklist whether this, for example, if the company is struggling financially, if it's not making profits, you will say they face a financial risk. If they don't have enough cash to pay dividends, you will say they are facing liquidity problems. If they are, uh, you know, dealing with suppliers who are based in another continent, they have a foreign currency exposure. If their strategies are not working and they are losing their revenues and market share, then we will say they have strategic risk or business risk. If they are fined by a regulatory authority, we will say they are running a high legal and compliance risk. 
Okay, so you need to remember this. And how do you recommend a uh, solution? Read the risk carefully and reverse it to arrive at the recommendation. It will work most of the time. And now we will do a question on this, so don't worry. Another topic, why risk varies? So my question is, let me hide this. Do you think every company they face the same level of risk? Do you think every company under the sun faces the same type or level of risk? Or you think that risk varies from company to company? Thus type varies or not varies? Yeah, okay, no, I got your answer. So now what are those factors? Why do you think the risk varies from company to company. Why is not same or constant in everybody? What are those reasons or factors? Why risks varies from company to company? Just name three factors. Business model is different, very good. Industry is different, size is different, location could be different. Operational activities can be different, strategies can be different. Are they? Wow, I'm impressed. Okay, 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 yes. I think you, when I, you know, when you think logically, you impress me. I, honestly, I'm impressed. But the thing is, when you do the paper, you go into a nutshell and you think like accountants. This paper is not for accountants. This paper is for a five-year-old child. So now, look at the list. Why risks varies from company to company? Because size of the company, it is different. Geographical locations can be different. The growth phase of the company might be different. There are startup companies. There are mature companies. The business models can be different. The financing structure can be different. And, and many more reasons, which I just saw in the comments. So very simple. Another question. Let me hide. You think all industry has same level of risks constant or risk varies from industry to industry? Keep in mind, you might compare a manufacturing industry versus a financial institution. They have the same type and level of risk or risk varies from industry to industry? Varies, right? Give me two or three reasons why you think risk varies from industry to industry? Two, three reasons. Yeah, different because different industry means different products, different level of investments, very good. Different level of regulations and laws, for example, um, a bank uh, faces a different type of regulation, different factors, different customer needs, very good, different structure. Yeah, bang on, it's very logical. And you know, uh, in the exam, this is like this, uh, this question has actually come in the exam. So it was about this company was uh, some, uh, it was a uh, manufacturing surgical uh, products, okay? And uh, they call it was making, making surgical equipment, which is used in life-saving operations. Or think about a company, pharmaceutical, making life-saving medicines. Or think about this vaccination for COVID, okay? So do, are they, are, uh, their level of risks, pharmaceutical industry, will be different from the risks being faced by a teaching institution like my, my college. Yeah, because the nature of product and industry is different, the level of investment is different, the regulations are different, the ecological aspects are different. If it's an oil and gas industry, it is more exposed to environmental risks. But level of usage of technology is different. Clear? Another topic is risk diversification. Obviously, one of the most 
common a way to minimize risk is to diversify so you must have heard this example don't put all balls in no what's that don't put all eggs in one basket what's wrong in that if that basket falls or if that basket gets stolen everything will be gone right that's a big risk you're concentrating stuff in one place the basic of risk management is to diversify the more you diversify the more you spread things the impact of anything the chances and impact of anything going wrong automatically reduces so diversification is a very key word so whenever you see this word diversification in your paper think of three type of diversification product diversification followed by industry diversification <clears throat> followed by geographical diversification so the basic diversification is that the comp is product diversification company should never rely on one product because a time will come when that product will just get mature or outdated or beaten up by the competitors so right and if if your whole and only one and only product it becomes mature it will immediately trigger your business risks your financial risk and going concern so it's always better that companies they have multiple products that's called product diversification once you have product diversification the next level the company can think of is industry diversification you might think of moving into another industry maybe related maybe unrelated okay and then third another level of diversification could be a geographical diversification if you are concentrated in one city you might want to expand in other cities if you are concentrated in one particular country you might wish to expand in other countries so diversification is at three level products level industry level geographical level remember okay okay so risk mitigation st strategy so organizations definitely they want to minimize the risk what is risk management risk management is all those steps which an organization takes to minimize the impact right so what are what are the risk mitigation strategies or activities or steps the first and foremost embedding risk in organization's culture okay if any organization they want to focus on risk management then they need to bring a culture of risk thinking then all the employees whenever they whatever they do whatever decisions they take they should be careful about the potential risks and how they can minimize it so you need to change the mindset when i say culture it means that all employees top to bottom should think and should take risks seriously that's the first thing embed risks in the culture of the organization then you will have a formal risk committee at the board level we did yesterday that there's a formal risk committee and then the organization will adopt COSO's ERM framework mm. So, you know, uh, what is ERM framework? It's a COSO's ERM framework. It is a proper framework for which is used by many companies for risk management. So what is a framework? So, uh, you know, what is an accounting framework? What is the most commonly used accounting framework for financial accounting and reporting? Do you know? Oops, my pen is not working. Just a minute, guys. See, this is the risk that the pen stopped working. IFRS, very good. 
So IFRS is the most common accounting, financial accounting reporting framework which is used. So a company who wants to be good in accounting and reporting, they will adopt IFRS. Similarly, in the field of risk management, there are also several frameworks available for risk management. And the most commonly referred or used framework is called COSO's Enterprise Risk Management Framework. So any organization who wants to do risk management properly, they will adopt ERM, COSO's ERM framework, okay? And then they will identify all the risks and they will make heat maps and TARA framework, TARA framework. Uh, TARA stands for transfer, accept, reduce, avoid. Okay. They uh, larger companies will have dedicated risk managers and there will be risk audits happening. Okay. So these are some basic steps which you would expect in any organization who is focused on risks and risk management. The last topic for risk management is risk committee. So risk committee we slightly touched upon yesterday that it is a proper committee. A risk committee is a committee at the board of directors level. Okay. And uh, it consists of majority of NEDs. It's not 100% NEDs, but it is mandatory that majority of the member of risk committee should be uh, NEDs. What do you think a risk committee does? It focuses on all the risk management activities. It tries to create the culture in the organization. It will uh, make sure that the organization implements COSO's ERM framework. It will make sure that proper risk registers are there, risks are identified, risks are mitigated, and all those things. What are the advantage of having a risk committee? We talked about it yesterday. Any board committee, what are the advantages? It will be more focused, more specialized, more time can be spent. Board can focus more on strategic matters, high involvement of NEDs, higher shareholder control. Same. Advantage of any board committee will always remain the same. Now, if you get a question which says, identify the key risks and give recommendation, as I had mentioned earlier, you need to use a tabular format. And we will assume three marks for one risk and its recommendation. Right, so here we end our topic on risk management. I wanted to spend some quality time on this topic because this there's always a question and students for some reason they struggle in this topic questions how can we create tabular format in a cbe okay the uh, in a cbe the the there's an option for tables like in a word document have you ever used microsoft word uh, you can put insert a table there Okay. Can you please share possible risk management strategies that can be adopted during the pandemic? Very interesting. Key um, risk management strategies that can be adopted during the pandemic. You guys tell me. What are the three things which companies should do to minimize the risk of pandemic? Maybe if, if COVID-2 happens, COVID phase 2 comes, what we need to do to be prepared? Wear mask? Come on, Janko. You think wearing mask will save your business from going concerned in a pandemic? Vaxi Baba, I'm not asking about your personal well-being. 
I'm saying how you can save the organization from a from the effect of pandemic. So please don't say vaccinations. How can you give vaccinations to the organization? Just a minute, guys. Excuse me. My cats are fighting. Sorry, guys. Hmm. Okay, now you guys are on track. It think like if it's your business, if you are doing some private business, what things you will do to make sure that your business survival survives COVID phase two? We must immediately move to online arrangements, right? That's the one thing which I learned that online, any, any business which was not present online was gone because, you know, there was, there was physical restrictions. There were lockdowns. There were so many things customers were avoiding. So online means not only online from customer's point of view, but also from your staff and employees' point of view. Yes, it depends on industry to industry. Very good. But even if, uh, you know, uh, if you pick up any industry, it has to be online. Online component has to be there if COVID phase two comes. Online with customers, online with employees, even if you're a factory. Don't you, how would the customer place an order? Will he come to your shop? No, right. Food, supermarkets, medicine. Again, online has to be there. Okay, do you, do you disagree with online? No. Oil and gas might not go online? Uh, not really. <laughs> okay, then um, I think cash, financial position reserves should be protected. Every planned project should be stopped. Anything which is leaking cash should be stopped. Very strict financial and liquidity management should be there. Anything which can be deferred should be deferred. Anything which can be collected quickly should be collected. Even cost cutting, cost rationalization, do whatever. So protecting your cash is very, very important. So arranging extra sources of funds, supposing you run out of cash, then you must have sources of funds aligned so that in case, in case you need cash, you can draw down. Mm, try to avoid fixed costs, very nice. Reduce fixed costs. You know, all these larger companies who had these lavish offices, um, because uh, a big restaurant, they were screwed. So try to avoid or minimize or reduce fixed costs. Keep yourself lean and mean. Focus more on online business model. Okay. You see? So again, no, no chapter or no topic can teach you these things. It is just discussions, logical discussions, brainstorming, common sense. Interesting. Now, let's quickly start this question. March, June 2019, Smartware. Question 1B.
Let me open this question. Let's read the requirement. Question required. Prepare a briefing paper to be presented at the next board meeting, which A, analyzes the environment in which smartware operates. We are not going to do this question. B, assess the major risks presented by smartware's uh, current business model and suggest appropriate mitigating actions to manage this risk. See this word? As identify and assess major risks and, and suggest. And two things. Professional marks is for what? Professional skills marks are available for Evaluation skills by assessing the identified risks at smartware objectively. So it looks to me that this professional marks, four marks, belongs to part B. And it's not between uh, divided between A and B. It looks like part B is 10 marks. 10 marks plus 4 marks professional, 14 marks part B. So it's very important that you read what the professional marks is about. Generally, this 4 marks is to be split equally, generally. But in this particular question, if you read it, it says uh, it's available for evaluation skills by assessing the identified risks. So it looks like. So this part B, how much marks? 14 marks. How many points? Can anybody tell me how many risks I need to identify? How many risks? Five. Okay, I don't know. Let me check, guys. Five, three is a 15. Yeah. How five? Because you divide by three. So we need to give five risks. And it's... Reckon. Okay, got it. Now, how do we identify the risk? So, there was a I want to go to exhibit two. So this is a meeting transcript of a recent smartware board meeting. It's one is too many. Eh? It's a board meeting. So I've just identified some key paragraph because it's a board meeting. It contains a lot of other information as well, which is to be used in other questions. But I uh, just for sake of time management, we couldn't read the entire exhibit, right? So can you read this paragraph and identify to me what risk uh, is being talked about in this? Time starts now. Oh my God, I know even by just reading the first two lines. Okay, you take your time. What is happening?
Okay, guys, tell me which risk? Financial position is not strong. Profitability of oh, business risk. Come on, man. How can you talk about business? This is not business risk. This is a financial risk. I want to. I want to kill myself. When I said clearly in my lecture a few minutes back that if your financial position is not good, it is a financial risk. If your profitability is going down, if your cash flow going down, if your gearing is going up higher, to, if your financial health is not good, it is a financial risk. How the hell can you write business risks? And some people are writing liquidity risk operational risk seriously you guys don't deserve to pass man i'm i'm being very blunt and honest do you, you guys try to make things complicated and you will pay the price no worries so all but majority of you said financial risk and that's perfect if there is any wrong if anything is wrong with your financial performance it's a financial risk. So look at these words. Our current financial statements do not present in a strong position. Our profits have fallen significantly. But we have done this, 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 this. But now we have significant info. So financially, it seems that, that if the company is now going into minus. It's a financial risk. So if you see, there's a strange thing. The evaluation professional marks is for evaluation skill. Hmm? Do you remember what is evaluation skill? That you need to give a balance assessment where you need to cover both pros and cons. So now when you are identifying the weaknesses, oh sorry, when you are identifying the risk and we are saying that the financial position of the company is not good, but there are certain sentences here. However, it's not bad news. Uh, however, we have managed to maintain tight cost controls. Our gross profit margins are still holding well. You know, to just try to use one or two positive sentence in order to score evaluation skill because evaluation needs to give a balanced assessment you need to cover both pros and cons okay now how do we fix this what is the recommendation here so we have identified the risk that there's a financial risk the company's financial statements is not showing strong position. Uh, the revenues are declining. The profit levels are falling. Uh, significant infrastructure overheads. What do you recommend? How the company can mitigate this risk? Very good, Sharos. Sharos is saying increase the revenue, reduce the costs. Good. Longer payable, SEMA for God's sake. Payable is working capital, right? And working capital is liquidity risk. You're talking about PL here. So we should just try to increase our sales. The question says the sales level has declined. So the, one of the strategies should be that we must quickly, the marketing department should quickly focus to um, you know, get the sales up. Similarly, it, the, it, it was mentioned that there were significant costs, infrastructure and overhead costs. So we should definitely, a stress word, you see stress word, we should definitely try to reduce our infrastructure costs and overhead. Try to use the wordings from here rather than giving general increased revenue, decreased cost. No. Say the same thing, but try to use specific words from the scenario. This is how you link with the scenario. You will 
say that use this word you know that the the smartware should focus on increasing the sales revenue uh, quickly and, and also we should try to reduce our infrastructure costs and overheads and now you understand how how you do it now i don't want any mistake this risk share prices the share value it's a listed company and there's a significant another stress word so there's a significant fall in share price and are concerned whether there would be any proposed annual dividend so i did not cover this but whenever you must be knowing that whenever the company's share prices they fall it is called market risk okay there's a specific terminology anything to do with share prices anything which can adversely affect your share price like losses like insider trading like reputational issues uh it is market risk yes so you just need to use the word market risk and then you explain and how do you deal with market risk why the share prices are going down in this case I think the share prices are going down because of uh, lower profitability. And if you read the case, there's one or two other reasons as well. How do you fix it? See, you just try to improve the profitability and address those things. Uh, and if, as soon as the profits are back on track, the share price will start going up again. Now this one. deplete our cash reserves now this is liquidity cash reserves working capital liquidity they, they are not they don't want to pay dividend because it will deplete our cash reserves further which means that they are having cash problems liquidity problems okay and how do they fix this problem number one they should hold back dividends number two they should hold back any non-essential uh, payments, better working capital management until the cash reserves are back to normal. What about this one? This is easy. The institutional investor suggested to me that the strategic direction of the company is completely wrong wow the strategic direction is wrong what risk and this is the main reason why company is losing sales what's wrong with which risk if it says the strategic direction is wrong strategic risk very good it can you can also say business risk because there's a very thin difference between the two but because the examiner has used the word something is wrong with the strategic direction i would like to use the word strategic risk okay little bit of common sense and how do you fix it again you know the strategies needs to be revisited and uh, new strategy should be made uh, to make sure that the organization's strategic direction is in line with the mission and the objectives. There's one more risk if you read. If I take you to the introduction, right in, in the introduction the first page you see there are sometimes important information hidden in the background page read this paragraph um, from here from here to here 
So this company, it sources its products. Sources means purchases its product directly from suppliers in low cost economies. So this company, this is Smartware. They are based in Europe. Okay, they sell Smartware as the name says. It says they sell clothing. They're based in Europe. Oh, it says here, yeah. Uh, Smartware is a long established clothing retailer, a highly developed northern European country. And where do they purchase for their clothes from? Directly from suppliers in low cost economies and somewhere down it says South Asia or Asia continent. What risk is here if you have suppliers from other continents? Exchange, forex exchange, foreign exchange risk. Yes, how do you mitigate that? Hedging or forward covers. So please, these are the basic risks. Huh? Business risks, strategic risks, financial risk when your profitability or going concern like profitability balance sheet is getting weak gearing is getting high uh, cash flow difficulties financial risk we talked about liquidity risk we talked about oh reputational risk it was not there but again it's a very important thing reputational risk technology risk um intellectual risk so you must remember this seven eight the common type of risk which any organization faces and you will be able to handle any question where you are expected to identify just go through the mental list of the risks and mention the name of the risk if you don't mention the name of the risk you will not score marks so you have to mention the name of the risk this is financial risk this is liquidity risk this is market risk okay right guys uh, any questions operation risk is by default in all organizations yes Fatima. Well, operation risk is also a common risk what does it mean that the operations the day-to-day -day operations of the organization it's uh, not up to the mark okay can we use one mitigation plan for two different risks yes why not it's real life paper. As long as you are logically correct, you will get much. Ria is asking in some paper, they asked to evaluate the risk register. Very good, Ria. And I will be doing this risk register question also tonight. But first, I must get satisfaction that you guys have understood risk and key risks. Reading from the comments, I'm not too happy. You guys are just thinking like accountants. Very bad. Uh, Dayang is saying there is a political risk in this introduction. Yes, very good. There is a political risk as well because this company operates in three other countries. Right, right, right. Very good. Okay, perfect. Right. So. What I do is, there's, uh, there's another question on risk management. I'm not going to leave you oh, like this. But I want to first do the remaining topics for tonight. And bilkul towards the end, we will pick up this question. Okay. I don't want to, you know, uh, miss the remaining topics for tonight in case there is an overrun. So let's park this question. This is a question which requires risk register, which Ria was asking. So I'll quickly complete these two slides in five minutes and I will give a break and then we can do a question. So we talked about what is risks, okay? So we know that risks is any bad thing which can damage 
the organization. So where there are risks, the companies, they implement controls. Obviously, how do you minimize the risk? For example, there's a risk of fire. It's a petrol pump. So the biggest risk in a petrol pump is the risk of explosion or fire. So then how do you mitigate this risk? The company or the petrol pump will need to implement certain internal controls. For example, there will be, uh, you know, you need to, you'll be asked to shut off your engines. You'll be, you'll be asked not to talk on mobile phones while you are at the pump. There will be fire extinguishers. There will be smoke detectors, sprinklers. Staff will be trained. All these are controls to make sure that the bad thing doesn't happen. So internal, what is internal control? It's a whole network of systems in an organization provide reasonable assurance that organizational objectives will be achieved and the assets will be safeguarded. Now, when there is internal controls, how do you know or how do we know whether those controls are working properly or not? How do you know whether that petrol pump in that remote location is following all these instructions? So then comes the role of internal audit. So someone the board, the board needs some assurance, right? That the controls, everybody is following the controls properly. So they want an independent assurance. So then the internal audit comes in, they audit everything, they identify any weaknesses and they go back and report to the board and then the management has to fix those weaknesses. And then there's an audit committee. So who makes sure that in audit internal audit is working properly? It is the audit committee. The audit committee is responsible for the entire internal audit function. They appoint the chief internal auditor. They decide the scope. They look at the reports. They make sure that all the weaknesses are rectified. Did you understand this high level chart? It gives you a big picture how things are managed. Number one, there are risks. How do we control risks? By implementing controls. How do we make sure controls are working properly? By having internal audit function. How do we make sure that internal audit is working properly? By having an audit committee. <laughs> Simple, eh? Now, again, in every paper, you will get a question on identifying internal control weaknesses. And uh, there is no rocket science. You will use, need to use your common sense. You will use to, need to use your judgment. Wherever you see certain gaps, doesn't, anything which doesn't seem right, that's a weakness. So you will identify the weakness, you will identify it here, and then you will give the recommendation like what needs to be done to fix it. Generally, how do you give recommendation? You just reverse, you just turn around the wordings of the weakness and it becomes recommendation. Mm -hmm. Again, this type of question, we will allocate three marks for uh, one weakness. Right, do I have any questions? Yes, Nino. Okay, so let's take a 10 minutes break. And then after the break, we have one question on internal control. I want to quickly talk about some basic uh, easy things. And then we will do one question on risk management, okay? Right, 10 minutes break. Uh, let me write the details. It's almost 9 p.m. here. I will see you at 9, 10 uh, sharp. All right, guys, see you in a bit.
All right, guys, uh, if you are back and you can see me, hear me, can I have a yes, please? Okay, thank you. So let's do one question on internal control weaknesses. As I said, this is a topic which is tested in almost every attempt, but unfortunately there is no chap, no, no, nothing which I can teach you on this. You will be needing your own judgment and common sense to identify weaknesses. And I will just demonstrate to it in a little bit. So this is um, September 2018 question. It's an actual uh, exam paper. Question number 3B. Let me open it. Mm -hmm. So this is question number three. It is now July 2022, three months after CC began construction of new road in Beetle. So CC is a company which builds or constructs roads, okay? And it is constructing a new road in Beetle. Beetle is another country and it is a mountainous region. Okay, you are Pat Singh, a consultant employed by CC's board. That's my role. So in this particular question, the role was changed in every question. Whereas in other questions, your role is defined in the introduction. But in this paper, your role, you were given different roles in each question. You have just left the emergency meeting regarding the incident at the construction site there's some that something happened at the construction site and are responding to the request made by cc's chairman at the end of the meeting so what has happened at the construction site requirement prepare a summary for cc's board to review assessing and control the sorry uh, prepare a summary for cc's board to review assessing the control weaknesses discussed at the emergency meeting stating for each control weakness its consequence and recommendation for improvements professional marks is for evaluation skills by basing explanation of significant control weaknesses on the information provided and recommending appropriate improvements. Four marks, 14 marks, 18 marks. Divide by three. Now, sometimes you see that now this guy has asked for actually three things. He wants you to assess the weakness and then stating for each weakness, its consequence followed by and recommendation. So maybe instead of six, you might also get away with five weaknesses. But if you are able to identify six, then it's better you give six because you can score one or two extra points. As I said, if you feel the question is easy and there are several weaknesses, then just give one extra weaknesses, spend like two, three, four minutes extra on that question in order to grab extra marks. Okay, so we know that at least five, ideally six in case we are able to identify. Okay, so let's read this uh, uh, emergency meeting thing. This one is Exhibit 5, transcript of an emergency meeting on July 
at CC's head office following protests against construction of the new road in Vitale. So, you know, it's an emergency meeting, which I don't like. It's, and who are there? The chief executive. The chief executive is there. His name is Burton. The chairman of the board is there. So something really serious has happened that the board uh, has to meet in a, in an emergency situation. Risk manager is there, and you, the consultant, is there. The meeting began at 10 a.m. Burton, who's Burton? CEO, opened the meeting by playing the following clip from Beatles news program about the break-in from earlier that morning. Presenter, so this is a news clip, okay. Presenter, two protesters were seriously injured last night after they broke into one of the construction sites for the new road through the I mountains. The break-in is an escalation of the recent protests against the new road. Protesters have been unhappy that they have not been able to meet with Burton Vader, CC's chief executive. Our reporter Iris is outside the site. Iris, what can you tell us about the break-in and the injuries to the protesters? Some key words seriously injured there's a break-in broke into it's a break-in is an escalation of the recent protest against the road the reporter now what does he say it appears that a number of protesters created a diversion outside this entrance. While the two security guards on site investigated, other protest protesters broke in elsewhere, close to where a break-in was attempted last week. Wow. On that occasion, the security staff spotted the protesters and prevented access. This time, however, two protesters got in. It seems that one collided with a van driven by an employee of CC. The other protester was apprehended by another employee and was subsequently taken away by police. Whoops, some serious drama is happening no representative for cc has made any comments about last night events and we have not been able to speak with any of the employees involved however as he was led away the protester who was arrested shouted out to the protester in shouted out about the protester injured by the van they ran him over the van deliberately went straight for him and ran him over now i understand why this emergency meeting of the board like the chairman and the ceo at 10 o'clock in the morning because last night on their construction site a big serious drama happened there was a big protest and then two guys broke into our site and one of them was hit by the van other one was caught this is negative media publicity uh, reputational risk reputational risk hmm. what's the weakness i haven't seen the weakness why this happened burton i thought that showing the news report was one of the best way to brief you on what happened 
although Alan has found out more. Alan, who's Alan? Risk manager. I have spoken to our employees and the staff from Shaolin Security, the security firm in detail, which we use. It seems that they both went to deal with the protesters at the main entrance. I mean, Imena, weren't there only two security staff on site? Yes, the contract only states that the security post should be manned at all times. Interesting. Do you think this is a weakness? It's supposed to be a big site and there are only two security staff on site. And when the people, when they created the protest, uh, these two guards were busy at the main gate and the other two protesters, they entered from somewhere else. That means that the, the construction site is not well protected. It is not secure enough. People can enter because there's just two guards whose main duty is at the main entrance. Do you agree? Do you think it's a weakness? It's a weakness, right? That it is, uh, the security is inadequate. The number of guards are inadequate. This is a very large construction site because it's a very large project, okay? So what's the weakness here? So remember, the, we need to identify, assess the weakness talk about its consequence and then give recommendations three things so assess the weakness we will say that the number of there were only two security staff on the site this quantity is not enough because they are uh, uh, because of this the 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 protesters were able to enter from other uh, area of the site and recommendation would be that the number of security guards needs to be increased in order to protect the site adequately. Easy, very simple, logical solution. Okay. The news report mentioned an attempted break-in last week where we told about it. So there was some break-in attempt last week as well. The security staff said that they had reported it to their managers, but no one from Solin Security appears to have contacted us. Oh my God, another weakness. That there was a protest and a attempted break-in last week. But no one in our company, the management was not aware of it because the security company never informed us. Whoa, what could be the impact of this? The impact is that the management will not be aware of any such incidents and hence they cannot take any corrective preventive actions. Okay, this is a serious thing. There are protests uh, are happening outside my site there's an attempt to break into the site why were we not informed we, we would we could have taken some uh, actions we could have met these people and listened to them what their problem is but we were never informed solution recommendation how can we fix this Yes, there's a deficiency in communication. Very good. We should there, we should there, we should just simply say that we should strictly instruct Solin Security to inform the management of any such incident immediately. Tell us. It is the job of the security companies. We have outsourced it, right? So anything which goes wrong, they have to inform us. Oh, 
okay the protester who was injured ran across an unlit service road and then the van collided with him should the area have been lit better so there was a very a dark road and then the, obviously when it was at night time it was very dark uh, this protester was running and he didn't see the van the van driver didn't see him and they collided so what's the problem here unlit let's read a little bit more apparently lighting was one of the things picked up by lee our health and safety manager what is the role of health and safety to make sure there is no accidents or injuries on our premises so the health and safety guy had picked up that you know lighting is insufficient it's very dark people might get injured or there might be accidents so he picked it up two months ago staff said that the lighting was going to be fixed before internal audits visit planned for next month <laughs> so the first weakness is that there is insufficient lighting and then it was picked up by the health and safety manager but the recommendation was not implemented since last two months so this means that they are not taking health and safety recommendations seriously what is the impact of uh, not having sufficient lights this is the weakness right accidents injuries and the exactly same what has happened what do you do now how do you fix it immediately make sure that all the roads are adequately lit or adequate lighting is uh, arranged in all the roads okay easier eh? now why isn't lee here who's lee oh lee is the health and safety manager lee's been off six for off sick he's sick for last six weeks wow corona oh my god we'll have to get a temporary replacement in now to fill the gap caused by lee's absence so that means that for last six weeks the health and safety manager is not available he's sick and they have not replaced so what could be the consequence of not having a health and safety manager um the risks of health and safety incidents will increase uh, the risk of injuries or accidents to customers suppliers employees public will increase and how do we fix it we fix it that to temporary find we should find a temporary replacement in case the uh, the health uh, the risk manager sorry the health and safety manager is sick for a long duration then we should immediately uh, allocate that role to someone else so that the uh, the activity is the function is not stopped any questions do you understand so again this is no topic it is just discussion between you and me on risks and weaknesses and impacts and recommendations now look at this the other guy who was caught the first guy was hit by a van right because there was not sufficient lighting the other guy was actually how he was caught he had fallen over a patch of oil oh my god which had not been mopped up this is why the guard was able to catch him <laughs> so the other guy the other protestant was also he fell over a patch of oil so again it's a health and safety issue uh if this guy has fallen that means that any there's a high chance that our employees or customers or suppliers may also slip 
and we you know there's a reputational risk here and uh, a risk of accidents and injury how do we fix it we make sure that the site is always mopped up any oil patch or any similar substance is cleaned immediately <laughs> okay that's about it uh, so i wanted to just show you what kind of questions normally comes when we talk about weaknesses so you just read need, need to read the story and wherever your brain says uh-huh this doesn't seem right this is a control weakness you identify it you just write a couple of lines on the impact that if it happens what what will be the consequence and then in the next column, remember the tabular format column? In the next column, you will give a recommendation as to how, so you think like an auditor. In this kind of a question where you have been asked to identify risk and give recommendation, you start thinking like an auditor. What is the role of auditor? To identify gaps, identify risks and weaknesses, and suggest recommendations so that the risk can be or the uh, mitigated or the weakness can be uh, removed do i have any questions okay very good Now, there is a small but an important topic. It is on professional code of ethics. And uh, this is also tested in your SBL paper. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of you are aware of this topic, but nonetheless, I would like to spend two, three, five minutes on this. Professional code of ethics. The, me the meaning of the word code, do you know what a code means in this context? Code means written guidelines. You know, or formal or official guidelines. Professional code of ethics means that there the ethical guidelines, ethical guidelines applicable to professionals okay ethical guidelines applicable to professional now what is a professional who is a professional any person any person who is qualified it may be an accountant so once you qualify you become a professional member or you become a member of a professional body so you are a professional it also applies on doctors because doctor is also a profession it also applies on architects, engineers, uh, pilots, okay, uh, any profession. So as long as you are a qualified person and you are a body, you're a member of the respected, respective professional body, you are a professional. And once you are a professional, then it is expected that you abide you strictly follow the code of ethics issued by your professional body okay so all professionals they need to follow five things now this one is more for accountants because obviously so the professional prince sorry, the principles of professional ethics by iesba and ifac this one is mandatory for all accountants okay so the first principle is integrity we all know that as accountants especially when you are a qualified accountant utmost thing is integrity you have to be honest you cannot steal money you cannot do frauds you have to be straightforward you have to be 
truthful, fair dealing. You cannot conceal anything wrong. Integrity means that you are a man of integrity words, okay? No nonsense, no hanky-panky. If you as a professional accountant, if you steal one dollar, you will you should be shot because then you are not fit to be called a professional integrity is the first principle agreed so you say honest integrity means honest straightforward truthful not conceal anything wrong being fair the second principle is objectivity Objectivity means that all your decisions should be based on facts and figures and merit of the case. I should not be influenced by anyone. I should not be under pressure from anyone. I, there should be no conflict of interest. Whatever decision I make, should be purely purely based on facts and figures no emotions no personal attachment no personal conflicts or gains neither you know i'm getting a call from the minister or i'm getting a call from you know the big ceo theoretically you have to make sure that you have to be objective in what you do so objectivity means fact based no biasness, no conflict of interest, no undue influence of anyone. It takes lots of guts, right? And as we become senior, like we face these kind of situations much more because when you see you are the CFO, obviously, um, you know, you will start getting, in, people will try to influence you. And you need to be very, very careful where you draw that line. Okay, but be very clear. You should be always objective in what you say, do, and what decisions you make. Number three, professional competence and due care. As obviously, if I'm a professional, I have to be professionally competent and have to take due care. You know, professionally competent means that although I'm qualified, I need to continuously up, update my learning, my knowledge, so that my skills, my knowledge is not outdated. So all these CPD programs, continuous professional development trainings, this is all part of maintaining professional competence. And due care means that I should not be careless in my work. I should be diligent i should not make mistakes because my one small mistake can cause a big damage to the company right so at cfo level there is no room for mistake i have to be very very careful in what i do and what decisions i take extra diligent sorry so it means maintain professional knowledge and skills up to date with laws, diligent in work, act with due care. Any questions so far? Yes, okay. Good. The fourth principle is confidentiality. Very, very important. As a professional, you have to make sure that you maintain confidentiality of information because and and the more senior you get and yesterday we discussed when as a cfo or as a director you have access to a lot of confidential information because by virtue of your role and designation and you should never disclose this to anyone any confidential information to anyone you cannot share any confidential information with anyone unless it's required by law that's a separate story 
and also you should not you know uh, use that confidential information for your personal gain remember insider trading it's all part of this so anything confidential should not disclose confidential information do not use confidential information for any personal advantage and lastly it's professional behavior it simply means that we should avoid actions which discredits the profession or my fellow members so i should not do anything which discredits my profession and you know if for example if i do a fraud if i do a fraud so i broke the principle i violated the principle of integrity right and simultaneously i also violated the principle of professional behavior because i did something against professional behavior and it brought discredit or uh, bad reputation to my profession or my fellow members okay any questions do you understand all right the next thing is short and sweet public interest again as a professional if you're a professional accountant or a professionally qualified person another important thing is public interest you have to protect public interest so we all know that our primary uh, purpose is um, uh, to protect the interest of the shareholders right because the companies they exist to maximize shareholders well and if i'm the finance director it is my job to maximize the wealth for my shareholders right however having said that if i am a professionally qualified accountant it is also my duty to make sure to protect public interest which means that i should not allow anything which goes against public interest or which causes damage to the public and when we say public interest we means customers our customers our suppliers our employees and society remember this list i think we did this list in social impact social footprint right when we talk about social impact social footprint i think it was day two we need to talk about our employees our customers and suppliers and society so same in same thing public interest also includes the same parties uh, we as a cfo i should not take any decision which causes damage to my employees or to the customers or suppliers or to the society for example if i am if my company is mixing some poison or some injurious ingredient let mixing some addictive material in my ice creams so that when a customer eat my ice cream they become addicted and they want more and more right it's possible right that the company is mixing some addictive thing in my in the products so if i'm the cfo and if i find out yes the profits and revenue will go up so shareholders income will double or triple but then it is causing injury or damage to the customer which is not right so i need to report this to the authorities okay so public interest any questions on public interest yes ahmed raza very good example <laughs> yeah i know what you mean right the the last small topic for today is called corporate code of ethics so the first one was professional code of ethics and this one is corporate code of ethics so the first one the professional code of ethics was applicable to 
professionals and it was issued by professional bodies and this one corporate code of ethics is applicable to the employees of an organization and it's issued by organizations so there was a professional code of ethics and there was a uh, corporate code of ethics it is this one is issued by professional bodies and this one is issued by organizations and this is mandatory for professionals or members of that body I hope you're not confused so one is professional code of ethics and one is corporate code of ethics now luckily very luckily corporate code of ethics is very simple because it just contains three things number one it talks about employees number two it talks about customers and suppliers number three it talks about society and community now have you heard these threes before yes so if you remember these three items these three items employees customer suppliers society community it will fit into the topic called social footprint it will fit into a topic called public interest and this three will also fit into a topic called corporate code of ethics so if you remember this list employees customer suppliers society and community and a little bit of this you you have actually covered three topics because they all talk about the same thing employees customer suppliers society community okay easy guys any questions yeah social footprint how do we deal with them meaning information will be given to you in the case we just produce the information according to employees, customers, suppliers, and society. Saad Malik is asking, do we say SBL is just a common sense paper? Saad Malik is asking, can we say SBL is a common sense paper? 200% yes not 200 2000 percent yes i know many students who just studied 15 hours webinar and scored 60 plus and when i interviewed them later on they said that we just you know uh, wrote logical points this is the beauty of SBL. The only thing is you guys don't understand this secret. The moment you understand, the moment you stop thinking like a student, the moment you start thinking like a CFO or a businessman, this paper will, will definitely pass. Stop thinking like a student. Stop thinking about syllabus. Stop thinking about the examiner think that you are the cfo think that you are the smartest person on the earth okay it's all about mindset yes oni technique answers format professional skills is very important that is why if you notice i emphasize a lot on formats and professional skills being smart and common sense has nothing to do with formats and professional skills that you need to follow but then if you master the formats and if you master the professional skills then all you need is some common sense that's it okay right so let's do another question on risk management and it is a very interesting question and i'll be very honest with you it is a difficult question because 
I thought that it also, you know, it, it got me thinking as well. So this question is the latest paper, which is uh, September, December 2020, called BCO. It's a charitable organization. Question number three. So just give me a minute and I need to open this paper. Oh my God, copied the answer, crazy man. Okay, I'm sorry it's marked. I didn't get the time to unmark it, but let's uh, question number three. I will just quickly um, rub this. Question number three 19 marks. Oh my god. So 19 marks question on risk management, 15 plus four, really. The chairman has asked to, the chairman has asked to meet with the CEO to discuss BCO's current risk management approach. Okay. The chairman has asked to meet with the, so you are, just a minute. The chairperson has concerns that the current risk register does not adequately evaluate the seriousness of the risks identified and that some relevant risks are not covered at all so what is a risk register so you saw the word you saw the word the current risk register can anybody tell me what is a risk register guess can you guess what is a risk register? Forget about prepared by risk committee. What is a risk register? It is a register which all risks are recorded. Very simple. A risk register is a register in which all the risks are mentioned. The company makes a list of all the risks, obviously, right? So we just said that organizations, they face a lot of risks and they have to do risk management, right? So the first thing is you need to make a formal list of the risk, no? And then you will uh, prioritize those risks. You will see their impacts. You will prioritize those risks. Not all risks are equal. Someone, some risks are high risk. Some risks are small risks. So you prioritize the risks. And then you, you know, you write the 
the control activities like what you plan to do in order to minimize or avoid the risk so a risk register is a comprehensive document which consists a list of risks their consequence and impacts and then more importantly what is the control or what needs to be done in order to control that risk so it is a risk register very nice so if you are an auditor and if you want to see what are the key risks which the company faces and what the company is doing about those risks which document should you ask for the key the risk register very good the risk register will tell you everything all the risks the priorities impact consequence recommend like controls everything will be there okay so now in this case what is the chairman saying the chairman is saying that the chairman has concerns that the risk register does not evaluate the seriousness of the risk and that some risks are not covered at all is this good or bad good or bad he's saying that the current risk register does not adequately evaluate some risk and that some risks are missing altogether good or bad it's very bad now he is also concerned that the risk mitigating activities are inadequate risk mitigating activities which is part of risk register the controls what you need to do to manage the risk he's saying that the risk mitigating activities are inadequate my god so bottom line he is not happy with the quality of the risk register the ceo disagrees oh and thinks that the risk register and the mitigating activities are sufficient and that the chairperson is overreacting because uh, the bcs latest financial uh, uh results so the chairman is convinced that the risk register and the risk mitigating activities is inadequate and the ceo is convinced that no the risk register and the activities required prepare a confidential report which evaluates the bco's current risk register and the adequacy of each of the risk mitigating activities clearly highlighting whether chairperson's concerns are justified or not professional marks are available for demonstrating skepticism skills oh god skepticism in questioning appropriately the opinions expressed by the chairperson and the ceo so do you remember yesterday how do we score skepticism we have a questioning mind we should ask questions we should challenge we should say we disagree we should say uh, um, you are in it is not correct if you can say that you know we need further investigation so your your drafting tone of drafting needs to be uh, amended to you know adopt a questioning language but do you understand the requirement prepare a confidential report which evaluates bcs current risk register evaluate the current risk register and the adequacy of each risk let's go to the risk register 
it is exhibit five. This is the exhibit five. It says BCO's risk register, identifying key risks and mitigating activities identified, for, identified by the risk committee. Now, how many risks are there? One, two, three, and four. That's it. So the risk register contains of four risks. So do, do does it mean that the organization is thinks that they face only four risks? Oh, interesting. Because in my company, our risk register is five, six, seven, ten, twelve pages. Because we have done a comprehensive analysis, and we've tried to, you know, jot down all possible things which can go wrong and cause damage to us so i said normally it's a long list 15 20 key risks are always there so let's see this, this is very interesting only four risks so it says potential risk potential impact and most more impact importantly risk mitigation activities so do you know what is the risk mitigation activities what are the acts which the company will take in order to prevent or address that risk okay the first one the uh, so it's a little uh, background. A charitable organization. It is words. Uh, it, it's a charitable organization. For wildlife protection, and it is uh, in its. It is one of the largest in the world. Survive on donations and sponsorship and all those things okay and supposing if if the donation stops coming in what will happen can anybody tell me that these charitable organizations if the donations stops coming in what will happen Uh, admin, some of the students are facing some voice problems. तुम होल्ड करो अब मैंने कैमरा बंद कर दिया है ओके हाय गाइस आह 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 इस माय वॉइस क्लियर नाउ इस माय वॉइस क्लियर नाउ 
Okay, okay. I think there was some problem. And uh, uh, I need to shut down my camera. Uh, so I think let's have the last 15, 20 minutes without the camera. Okay. Yeah, there will be no video because I have shut down the camera in order so that because of uh, the bandwidth, I think. Uh, yes, video is gone. Right, so just listen to me. So fund fundraising pressures, that's the big risk, okay? Fundraising pressure. You think it's a big risk for a charitable organization? They are all dependent on donations. So raising funds, there's a pressure for fundraising. And in this country, in this country, there is a recession for the last couple of years and donors, you know, their disposable income is going down. Accordingly, the donations are reducing. So this is a big risk. It may lead to a going concern, right? Do you agree? Hello? Hello? Guys, can you hear me? Because yes. Uh, okay, yeah, I think there is some system hanging. Yeah, okay, now I can see your messages. All right, okay. So you, this is a big risk. Now, what are... risk mitigation activities okay let me hide this working in a charitable organization and there is a risk that the donations or your income might reduce okay so what things you would do to make sure this doesn't happen can you think two or three things to make sure that your revenues don't go down can you let me know Reduce, okay. I think you have you are reading the answer. Oh, um, I think your net cost line, huh? huh? Oh, hmm. Right, guys, I don't know what's wrong. Uh, some of the students are facing audio problems, so I'm extremely. Right, uh, I don't know, there's something wrong with the audio, so let me first get this. Uh, some students are saying it's now the voice is. Yes, Ahmed. Yes, Obed. Yes, Obed. So, I am now. Ah, sir, I am. Ah, sir, I am. Ah,
हेलो 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 ओके हाय टेस्टिंग माय वॉइस टेस्टिंग वन टू थ्री टेस्टिंग माय वॉइस टेस्टिंग वन टू थ्री ओके ओके um hi guys i'm back with another internet connection is my voice clear now very nice very nice i'm so stressed out because of this okay so we were tech talking about technology risk okay right 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 yes technology risk so now it's a charity and there's this fundraising pressure on them. So what activities you think they should do to make sure that their funding is not affected? What they need to do? So what they are saying, they will implement appropriate cost budgeting procedures. Cost budgeting procedures, okay. They will monitor the adequacy of financial returns achieved. They report fundraising activities to stakeholders in annual report. How many of you think that these risk mitigation activities is sufficient or adequate to address the risk of fundraising pressure? So the risk is fundraising pressure. Do you think this risk mitigation activities would help you manage fundraising pressure? These are not enough. These like these are like uh, not the main. So tell me what actually if it is your company and there's a risk that your revenues might go down what will you do yes this guy is very smart kazi kazi is saying i will look for more donors fundraising campaigns okay i'm just reading comments increase marketing very good more fundraising strategies nice obviously i told you you read the risk and how do you fix it you reverse that risk increase more awareness very good new methods of fundraising very good go to international donor as countries in recession okay well that's a good one fine international donors as my country donors in my country are uh, uh, facing issues have a website very good i think they have a website already 
donation through social media very nice so these are all fundraising strategies so don't you think don't you think that the if i was sitting on the board of this company i would say okay this is right this is right this is right no no i don't have any problem but first and foremost is more fundraising strategies more marketing more this so first of all we should focus to how to increase our revenues and then all these cost and returns and reporting is secondary for me so for so i'm pretty sure that this one is inadequate because these mitigating activities are not directly addressing the risk of fundraising pressure these are more reactive more documentation more this why will we will look at this we will report this bullshit fundraising pressure risk needs to be addressed through more creative fundraising activities finding more donors <laughs> marketing being creative being different beating your competitors nothing of this sort is in there do you understand the approach very good someone is saying expert consultation i like that let's find companies let's find experts consultants who are expert in this who can guide us on fundraising uh, you know very nice request for government grants very interesting good very nice so that's the thing the second uh, so this one is uh, can i say this one let me is inadequate and what is the professional skills here skepticism so you will say that this is not addressing this is not this is missing so you adopt a negative tone now let's look at law risk number 2 they are saying loss of key staff so this is a charitable organization and obviously in a charitable organization there are volunteers and there are some key staff and because they are dealing with wild life they are dependent on certain technical staff you and i cannot deal with wild life wild animals so there's a chance there's a risk of loss of key staff and if their key staff leaves what will happen they will experience experience or skill will be lost that's the impact and operational impact on key animal protection projects very sensible that if i lose my key staff our experience and skills will be lost and our ongoing projects will be affected now what they plan to do let's look at that let's look at this list they say that we will do succession planning that's very good you know what is succession planning that every person they train their subordinates so that once i retire or i leave my second line is ready to step into my role so succession planning is very good agree notice periods and handovers that's nice they just can't go like this there has to be a proper notice period and proper handing over procedures that's nice review recruitment process and policies okay so i think they have nailed down they have uh, talked about good things succession planning is the most important thing we do for intellectual risks and notice period but can you find so i think this is much better than the first one it is adequate but can you suggest one or two extra things what is missing here ah very good staff retention motivation 
to salary, benefit, trainings, excellent. So in addition to this, so for so don't get me wrong, succession planning is a good good mitigation strategy. Agree on notice period is definitely something. So this is a adequate, but if you want to add something, you can say uh, we should properly, their pay scale should be reviewed regularly, trainings, motivation, that's it. If you want to add. Now, third risk, increased competition. So there are more charitable organizations in wildlife sector. So there's increased competition. So it's a charitable organization. How can competition affect them? It doesn't matter if you are charitable or not. You have limited donors. So if you do not appeal to them then your competitor will take your share of donation right so if this increased competition it means what's the impact loss of income definitely your donations your sponsor revenues will go down reduce public profile so what do you need to do how can i like deal with increased competition risk now look at what they do. Monitor methods of service delivery, monitor public. They just monitor. How, how do you think monitoring will reduce this risk? I think this is not adequate. How can you reduce the risk of increased competition by monitoring? Bullshit. Give me a couple, two suggestions. How can you reduce the risk of increased competition? Ah, improve your service quality. Very nice. Provide good service. Very good. Focus on a target market. Very nice. More marketing, more publicity. And I'm just reading comments. I'm not saying this on my own. Excellent, guys. Excellent. So do you think monitoring or whatever bullshit they have mentioned is adequate or inadequate it's definitely inadequate and you have to write it clearly in your answer it is inadequate because if you remember the question it says that you need to clearly specify it's adequate or inadequate Fourth one, how about the fourth operating in dangerous locations around the world? So there's a risk. These guys, some of them, because it's a thing in parts of the world. And what's wrong in that? What can happen? Staff or volunteers may get injured or killed carrying out their responsibilities. Oh my. Oh my God, so definitely it's a risk. What are they doing to reduce this risk? Monitor and review activities in the recognized dangerous locations and procedure remove staff at short notice. That's nice. So if something bad happens, you must have procedures in place to remove your staff very quickly. Closely work with local security and safety services regular training i think uh, i'm impressed do you agree that uh, you know they have adequate procedures in place in case something dangerous happens they can remove their staff very quickly from that site they work closely with the local police authority of that country or city and they give trainings to their staff what to do how to do drills and all those things i think it's adequate what do you think Yes, adequate. And there's uh, someone is saying provide to them safety gears and safety equipment. Yeah, I like that. First aid. <laughs> provide first aid. Okay. But is that a small thing? Insurance? No. Insurance is a reactive thing. Insurance is when the damage is done, then you get money and go. So if your staff is killed, 
they just get some money, right? But there's a reputational risk. Increased number of skilled employees, but how would that reduce the risk of dangerous activities? Someone is saying reduce operations in such, in such locations. Yes, that's a possibility, but it might uh, go against your mission, right? But I think it's adequate, so no need to uh, try and add more stuff if you, you know, it's, it's all right. Now, so for sure, the risk register has four risks. Two of the mitigation activities are inadequate and two of them are adequate. Do you understand? So this is uh, uh, one point, adequate two point, three point, and four point. You have given four points as of now because you commented on the adequacy of each of them. Four points done. Now, one, what's this? The risk committee is chaired by the. Uh, chairperson and has two other board of trustee members okay the committee meets once a year to review risk register is this the role of uh, risk committee what is the role of risk committee the role of risk committee is all inclusive right they need to do everything they they just no need to uh, their role is not only to, to review the risk register it's about creating the culture of risk management, um, adopting SPOSO CRM framework, risk registers, implementing those, monitoring all these things. And they just meet once a year. Isn't that crazy? Normally, the they have to meet at least, at least every quarter if not more. Okay. Every so this is another point, point number five. Now my if you go to the requirements, we have addressed anything or we have missed some. Can you please read the requirement? Hi guys, uh, I'm back. Can you can you hear me now? Very good, very good. All right, all right. Let me let me quickly wrap up a little bit. So please read the requirement. Have we addressed everything? The question says prepare a confidential report which evaluates the BCO's current risk register and the adequacy of each of the risks. 
So we identified talked about all the four risks and we commented whether it's adequate or not. So we gave four points. Okay, one we 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 had four points, one for each risk. Then we said that you know the board should meet quarterly. Now, what about this? What about this? The chairman thinks that some of the risks are not even there on the register. So we first talked about the risks which were already mentioned on the register. But what about those risks which were not on the register? So let's go back to the register and see. So which risk you think is missing? So just recall, just recall uh, um, the key risk, business risks, financial risks, uh, reputational risks, political risks, uh, technological risks. So you think that uh, business risk or strategic risk is there? It, it, every organization they face business risks and strategic risks and financial risks these are basically inherent risks of any business so you, you always you can now in one of the exhibits look at exhibit six look at exhibit six exhibit six is a news article on the recent Bad publicity surrounding leadership issues in charity sector. What is the exhibit about? It is about recent bad publicity in about the charity sector. Bad publicity. What risk is this? Bad publicity is what risk? Reputational risk. So there's a full exhibit on bad publicity for charity sector. So now this is a very clear and present risk which uh, the charity company faces. But do you see any mention of reputational risk on the risk register? No, 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 idiots. Do you see any mention of business or strategic risk? Do you see any mention of financial risk? You can say that, you know, the risk register only talks about limited number of risks. There are risks such as reputational risks, business risks, financial risks, legal risks, technology risks, political risks, which BCO needs to consider and document in its risk register. How's that, guys? How's that? Good one, huh? Goodwill can goodwill risk is the operating dangerous. No, what is goodwill risk? It's a reputational risk. Yeah, <laughs> it was a you see. Yes, it's a crazy question. I completely agree. It's a crazy question. So if you guys are struggling with this, I don't blame you for once. OK. This is a crazy question because, you know, even I faced a little bit of difficulty in solving this question. Not really difficulty, but I had to really concentrate and use my 
experience to come up with answers. So definitely it's a crazy question. And imagine if it had come in your paper. People who are giving second attempt or third attempt, they must have seen this paper. Can anybody remind me the marks? How much marks is at stake? Oh my God, 19 marks. 19 marks is at stake. So now, now you understand the reason why I deliberately selected this question tonight. So I just talked about risk management tonight because it is a topic which is generally easy, just requires some basic acumen and you can score high. So if you know the answer for this, after our discussion, it will seem a very easy question to you. But it is the actually how to start, how to get the right uh, on the right track. That's difficult. That's why I picked up a question on risk register. It is a very subjective question because it is asking you to comment on the adequacy. If I was in your position in the exam, I would first have given one point on this. This is an easy scoring thing, right? Once a year, I would have started with this. Then I would have said following risks were missing. And I would say reputational risk. So I would go for, I would first go for low hanging fruits. I would give some points, the easier points. And then I would have come and talked about this. And as soon as my time allocation is up, I would have stopped writing and and move to the next question. Do you understand the approach? And was there a format required? Oh, he says prepare a confidential report. So what is a confidential report? It is just like a normal report, but instead of giving the heading report, you will give the heading. Confidential report. Rest everything is same to subject date. All right. Ah, so now, uh, oh, it's already eight minutes past 10 30. Uh, I'm so sorry for that, guys. I think uh, because of this technical uh, voice issue. Uh, so, all right. So, uh, let's meet tomorrow, same time. And tomorrow is our last day. And tomorrow is important because I will be covering technical articles. I will be again talking about some important topics. I will recap. I will recap lots of things. Uh, so tomorrow, uh, please try and attend tomorrow. It will be a very important ending session. Uh, so till then, uh, you guys take good care and good night.